Life is an expression, an alignment, and life is growth. Let's look at it this way. There are only two points in life. The first point is the self. You're the center. So the self is the first point. And the other point in this whole circle, as children, we, we had geometry and then we had a compass and then we used to keep that center point and then we draw a circle. So we are the center of that circle and we have a relationship 360 degrees. I want this. I want that. I want that. I want that. So our relationship from that center is a matter of all the good things in this world. So, it is a matter of feeling that I want that thing and I can get it. I want that thing and I can get it. I want that thing and I can get it. Now, there are three things here. I want that thing and I can get it is a matter of alignment. I want that thing and I can get it. You're in alignment. But this feeling runs to three things. I can be, I can do and I can have. So I can be that person. You see someone inspiring and you say, I can be that person. You know, small children, you, you watch small children in their early years. One day they want to be a doctor, another day they want to be a teacher, third day they want to be a pilot, fourth day they want to be something else, fifth day they want to be a policeman, sixth day they want to be a thief. They want to play that chore police. So, I want that thing and I can get it. It's a matter of being in alignment. As children, we may have wanted anything, you know, we when we played police and uh, the thief or something, we may have even wanted to be the thief. That's a different kind of thing because that is innocence. But as we grow up in life, we learn to identify the things that we want and those things can come to us if we are in a place of alignment and we are able to feel, not say from here, we are able to feel within ourselves that I want that thing and I can get it. The next thing, now I can be. I can be that pilot, I can be that doctor, I can be that teacher, I can be that whatever. And the next thing is doing. So you see people do some things, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. They are identifying. I can be, I can do. And the third thing, as a result of being and doing later on in life, we come to that stage of having I can have that, I can have that, I can have that. As small children, they want to have everything. They want to have a plane, they want to have that, uh, you know, sports car. They want this, they want that, they want to have everything. And it's not only about having things, it's about having good experiences, lots of things in that I can have, lots of things in that I can do. And lots of things in that I can be. This forms the circle. 360 degrees. You are the center. What you and I are supposed to feel is. I want that thing and I can have it. 
I want to be that person and I can be that person. I want to do that thing and I can do that. I want to have that and I can have it. This is where we are supposed to be. But life being whatever it is and life is a learning experience basically we learn because we learn and by learning we grow and so we express ourselves you know I can be that person so you express yourself as that so expression is directly related to growth and growth can only happen in the right direction when you are in alignment. Otherwise, growth is not happening. The direction becomes different. Misalignment. So, I can be, I can do, I can have. These three words, be, do and have, exist in all languages. And so, these are very powerful feelings within us which should be there within us from very early childhood so if we have had experiences we have seen our loved ones being doing having all those things they come to us automatically as feelings those feelings get transferred to us but if in our early years the experiences of the people with whom we were those things were all i can't i can't i can't so now there's a relative very sick in a diseased condition you have great affection and attachment for that relative so what happens now there is an emotional investment in that non-health condition and that child mind is observing all kinds of things that that person cannot do because he or she is not well and so there are things that you know can't do rather than can do can't have rather than can have can't be rather than can be and this only one small example don't think disease is everything. This is a, an example which, you know, it's easy to understand. But this can go for anything. You can apply it to anything. So if the basic feeling, sometimes the family dynamics are such, you know, there are property struggles, there are family feuds, there are disputes among family members, uh, there are alcoholics in the family, there are all kinds of situations, not very healthy. All those are going to make an impression on that emotional body is one thing. But they will, being there in the emotional body, they will contribute to strong feelings of I can't, I can't, I can't. So instead of that comfortable feeling of I want that thing and I can have it, the feeling that will get developed is, I want that thing, but I cannot have it. Now, this is a roadblock. And with respect to many of the good things in life, we develop such roadblocks from a very tiny age, even without realizing in an earlier video, you can look for that video, we, we spoke of, uh, you know, scientists saying that we have 50 to 80,000 thoughts in a single day. And uh, I had asked you if you could sit with a notepad or a register and actually note down those 50,000 or 80,000 thoughts. And it is virtually impossible. You can't do it because... Only a few of those thoughts will come into our conscious awareness. The rest of it is there. Those 50 to 80,000 thoughts every day, they are going round, but they are in the unconscious part of the mind. That part of the mind to which we don't have access to. So we don't know what is there. What all thoughts there are. What all feelings there are, we can never know. 
so now it is difficult to access those things and only life situations outside can indicate and by life situations i mean what you are able to get in life or what you are not able to get in life those things will indicate what are those unconscious feelings that you are probably carrying and one feeling can give rise to 1000 thoughts so if you have a few primary feelings strong negative feelings you will not know why you are unhappy why you're miserable you have everything good in life you have a wonderful family you have wonderful children you have a, a wonderful career you have a lot of money you have all the material comforts that you can possibly desire and still you are unhappy because of those unconscious feelings which have got stored and because of those unconscious feelings bad feelings there are lots of thoughts that keep moving around and you're not aware of them and they suck all the energy from inside so now there cannot be that feeling of joy that that desire that zest for life that sort of you know begins to ebb it becomes less so i can be and the opposite is i can't be that thing i want to be that thing but i cannot i want to be that person and i can be that person i want to be that person but i cannot be that person i want to do that thing and i can do it i want to do that thing but i cannot do it I want to have those things and I can have them. I want to have those things but I cannot have them. Now we see two feelings here. We are the center. Those are the things we desire and the alignment. If it is an alignment, I want that thing and I can get it. Success or whatever comes to us easy. And when there are roadblocks, I'm the center, I want that thing and there are roadblocks which only mean emotional blocks, feelings, bad feelings which have got stored up. So I want that thing but I cannot get it. If those roadblocks are few, then with time they might dissolve and you may get that thing after a few attempts. But if those roadblocks are many and they are really big blocks and you wait for time to dissolve them, that may not happen. That may not happen because every time you are trying to do something, you are not succeeding. Trying to do something, you are not succeeding. You are trying to run a business, you are failing. Then after some time you try it again, again you fail. Then again you try, you invest a lot of money, again you fail. It goes on and on and on. You're trying for a job, you don't succeed. You try again after some time, again you don't succeed. Those roadblocks are, you know, less in number. So every time, oh, only by, by a mark, by two marks. I could have got it, but you know, it was just, I just missed it. So, these are roadblocks. So you don't give up. You keep on trying, keep on trying. But what happens is somewhere because we don't know the cause of these things. And how long will you go on trying when you're not getting to see results? So one day what people do is they give up hope. They give up the hope that they can ever get it. And they think that I cannot get it. The system is at fault. My luck is at fault. My horoscope is at fault. Yes, the horoscope is at fault. But all these things are at fault. And so I cannot get it. That's a strong feeling. And that becomes a roadblock. And so those things that we want to be or we want to do or we want to have, 
do not come to us. If there are strong negative feelings, it will depend on, you know, how much you desired to get and how much you have been broken down by your own disappointments. So there was this desire to get, but you know, on that emotional body, the impressions are all, let's say, negative. There's a lot of potential in you. There's a lot of talent in you. You can really achieve. You can be a high achiever. But the impressions, the pictures on that emotional body are all negative. And so somewhere you see on a daily basis, you keep seeing things, you observe things, you observe the atmosphere in your home, you see the kind of life that people around you, primarily your parents, your caregivers, the kind of life they live, the kind of mindset they have, the kind of thinking they have. And you receive a lot of it through your feelings. And before you know it, there is a strong negative impression on the mind. And this is going to be a terrible roadblock. It will act like a wall between you and that thing which you want to achieve. So now every time you try to achieve, that wall shows up. It's an invisible wall. But that wall takes the shape of an external circumstance. There may be a disease. There may be loss of good health to some degree. There may be some incident in the family, something in the family which prevents you from, you know, going ahead and doing that thing. There could be hundreds of things. It's an inner wall which is showing up as an outer circumstance. This is something that we have to get. This is what we call resistance to change. We are so used to a certain kind of mindset. We are so used to a certain kind of life. We have got used to, even if it is negativity, we have got used to it. Now, taking a step out of that is a very big step for us. And we are not able to do it. And when we try to do it, it becomes a very big hurdle which we are unable to cross. And so, when we understand what are those roadblocks? Are there incidents? Have there been people in your family who were very sick? And have you invested emotionally in that sickness? Have you had conditions of failures in business? or the failure to achieve, or negative mindsets, frustrated desires, are these things, you know, have these things been a part of your early childhood? Have you had a parent who had a lot of potential, but who somehow suppressed all that potential and was not able to achieve much? She wanted to, she couldn't. He wanted to, he couldn't. Whatever may be the reasons, we don't know the reasons, but these are things. So now what happens? What happens is imprints of that are there within you. And so even before you actually set out to learn or do something, they will show their faces up as some kind of stumbling blocks which you will never be able to overcome because you don't know what they are. So the first requirement is 
you've got to bring yourself in alignment. I want that thing and I can get it. This is alignment. However you bring yourself to this position, that's a matter of choice. I want that thing and I can get it. So you will have to examine your feelings. It, is it coming naturally to you? I want that thing and I can get it. Or you feel it sometimes from here, but most of the time it is no. I want that thing, but I cannot get it. So you see someone else succeeding. It makes you feel that I can't get it. You're not feeling jealous. You're feeling bad because you know you have the potential and something tells you that you cannot get it. So it's only a bad feeling. It's not jealousy. You're not jealous of people. It's a bad feeling of I know I have that potential, but I also know that I cannot get it. So these are feelings that we will have to examine as individuals. It's an individual journey for you. You have to be able to look at your life situation wherever you are today. If everything is beautiful in your life, then there's no need to worry. Everything that is being told here does not apply to each and everybody. Some things will apply to someone. Some other things will apply to some others. And most of the things, it could be that they will not apply to you because you've already, you know, moved ahead from there. And you're just trying to learn this because you're interested in how the mind works and how growth and development and alignment happen. But if there is a stuck situation in your life, it could be anything it could just be a habitual low feeling it could be something bordering on depression and anxiety it could be a troubled relationship it could be a, a case of not being able to achieve that success in career it could be a condition of ill health or disease that ill health that disease is an umbrella term. Yes, all doctors will have to be required to, you know, look into what is happening to you because that condition has grown so big. But you will have to learn to heal yourself by plucking or, you know, it's like a, it's like a sponge or something like that in which lots of pins have been inserted. You'll have to learn to pull out each and every pin that is stuck there. And when you learn to do that, you will find that you're able to allow a lot of energy to flow into you. Already energy flows into us. But because of our bad feelings, they get directed to all the bad feeling things. And so they become the roadblocks and they don't allow the thing that we want to come to us. So if we learn to understand ourselves and if we learn to pull out all those things that, you know, are causing us that problem, then we will certainly come to a place where we will be at least better aligned and from that place, we can move to a place of, you know, very good alignment.